Hey everybody, it's Rob, and we're back in Rotterdam, straight from Scorum, Harsnyder, and Barbier. Um, what we're going to do today is, my friend Mr. White here, uh, I did a haircut on him, and we made a little video that did really, really well on our social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, make sure you visit those. Um, but I got a lot of questions if I wanted to do a little bit more of a detailed video showing my sectioning and my fading. So, being me, Mr. Nice Guy, well, blah, blah, blah. Here we go, I'm gonna show you how we did that one. Um, first, I'm gonna take you to my materials. This is basically what I take around the world when we're doing hair shows or whatever. Uh, clipper comb, this is my, my scissor comb, fan brush, pick, um, Mitsutani Bloody Butcher Edition pink scissors and blenders, and then I got my clippers. Most important thing, before I ever start a haircut, wetting the hair, and pretty much finding out what I'm gonna do, yeah? I would love you guys to subscribe to our channel um, so you can watch the other videos and compare those videos. And you will find out that I basically use the same system on every haircut, whether it's a flat top or a slick back. Yeah, I always got a system and it kind of works. If you want to know more, of course, you can always join one of our courses at the Old School Barber Academy where you can try the technique for yourself, yeah? Um, Mr. White here has some absolutely amazing hair and he's in really, really need of a haircut, yeah? But as you can tell, this is the perfect hair to shape. See, you can either do a slick back, we can pump, pump it up, yeah, but what I really like is to create that old school look. So a little longer on the side. So what I'm gonna do is, see, all the cool action is gonna be on top. So I'm gonna save the best for last, yeah? So I'm gonna start with my first section, following the natural hairline. Yes, I know I wanna go short in the nape area, and I know I wanna keep it a little bit longer on the side, so in front of the ear. So I'm taking away all this hair. Now, in my head, this is exactly what I do. I'm saving it till later. I don't really think about that hair yet. That is something I have to connect to what I'm doing right now. So what I'm gonna start with, yeah? See, I want this long enough to be able to slick back, but short enough to take those little curls off. The most important thing for me, yeah, I mean, I want my client to look good when he leaves the shop, right? That is very good commercial promotion for my shop. But if he cannot recreate that haircut when he leaves the house next morning, it's a shitty haircut. Yeah, I said it before, I probably say the same thing in every video, but for us, this is the most important thing. We want hair, I mean, we don't, it can be a perfect haircut when it's being checked by another barber, but that's not the most important thing. He actually is another barber, but the most important thing is that the next morning, a little bit of product and a comb should be enough to make it look exactly the same or even better as the day he left our shop. That is a client that's gonna come back to your shop, yeah? Boom, so I'm taking out, right? This is a section that I'm taking out. Yeah, because these are gonna be my longer fenders. And longer fenders are really gonna give you that 50s feel to the haircut. Yes? So that means that I'm gonna start with this area here. Yeah? Now, I wanna go super short in the nape area. In other words, I'm gonna go really short up to the occipital bone, yeah? So I wanna set in the baseline by lifting all this hair up. Now, if you're gonna watch that baseline, see? Combing all that hair up, making sure I'm taking the hair 
off the skin. Yes, and the length that I'm gonna set in right here is gonna be the length of the fenders. So my fingers pretty much point to the length on the side, yeah? So if I wanna go shorter, yeah, I change my body position, yes? So line up, up. Now I hope you can see yeah, that I'm staying parallel with my parting here. See, so the middle of my part of my section is pointing to the middle of my body. If you use this as a trick, so when you're learning in school, we always say use the crown as a pivot, which means you take the highest point, like, like your arm is a rope, and you always make sure that you are right behind your work working, yeah? So you're in control throughout the haircut. Use the crown as a pivot. So if I want to set in a line like this, boom, yeah? I'm always looking straight at the highest point of the head. Very important because especially if you want to be in this, um, in this job for over 30 years, your body, you should not be forcing it into direction it doesn't want to go. Make sure that your shoulders and your wrists are always very relaxed when you're working. Yeah? So up. Baseline. Move. Stay parallel with your baseline. Move. Parallel with your baseline. Up. Now by lifting all that hair up, you are creating graduation. See, so now if you check your line, yes, by lifting it up, you already have the perfect graduation into the transition to the hair on top. Yeah, so that is a very fast way setting the baseline but now look at this yes because the hair here tells me pretty much exactly what to do right I got my length yeah so I can follow that line right over there because I got my guideline I got my guideline Yes, if I follow that guideline, see, very, very fast and very clean way of working. Now I wanna go short in the nape area, so I'm gonna connect that hair under the occipital bone, look, I'm going really, really short. Yes, look at the growth pattern of the hair. Put your clippers on half and take out and blend in. Get hair in that nape area. Okay. My next step, yeah, I'm gonna move with my white comb that I use for my scissor work yes and what you can already see that is a nice flow into that nape area right so length yeah and first I'm gonna clean the ear
See, once the ear is cleared, now that is a lot of length on the side. Yeah, so you could actually, this is like a super old school way of working. Yeah, once this is cleaned up. Now there's a little bit of bulk in my fenders, but because I cut my outline already, all I have to do is check with the previous cut baseline. Yeah, if you want to keep length on the sides, over direct it into the back. So you're going to keep that length to play with. Boom. See, no hair left. You got this really nice transition into that nape area. Yeah? Now, I like it to be able to go into the back in a fluent way, so I'm just gonna take up a little bit of weight here in the front. See, till there's no hair left. There you go. If you want to double check yourself, cross check yourself, you can of course. See, that is a very nice way to put a lot of contrast in your haircut. So going from really long in the front to super short in the nape area. Anybody that has seen uh, Cry Baby, the movie with Johnny Depp, great movie. Yeah, he's really short in the nape area, but the length in the front is like this. This is the way to do it, yeah? Okay, I'm gonna move to the other side and repeat exactly the process I did on this side. Okay, next section, very easy. Where the ear is attached is the highest point of the skull, so we're taking out this triangle. Yeah, and within that section, I'm gonna take a section about as wide as my comb. Yes? So basically what you're gonna get, it's exactly the same as that line before, make sure you comb it exactly where you wanna have it. Over direct, so you're gonna get graduation into the back. Look for your previous cut baseline. And connect to that baseline. Yes, so you're gonna have a nice graduation into that back area. If you wanna double check, take your sections. See, well, it's close to, 
perfect. But if there is any excess weight you might want to take off, this is the moment. Okay, and we're going to continue till all the hair is cut. So another section, as wide as my comb, within that triangle. Yes. I said it about it a hundred videos before. I cannot say it enough. Body position, knowing where you are in your haircut. See, this is where I stand. So that's where I'm gonna pull my section towards. No more hair coming off. Perfect. Then we're gonna move to the other side. Double check. Yeah. There you go. Section. Over direct, look for your previous cut baseline. There you go, and check. Yeah, so that is a very fast way of removing bulk and setting in that basic shape of your cut you're gonna work with. Lift, check for baseline, and connect. See that flow into the back? That is, that is like really, that is a really fast way of removing all that hair. See, this is what's gonna be slicked back later on. It's gonna look really, really nice. So, that means we still have a lot of hair left here in the front. What you can do is take out the length in the front following the implant. which is gonna leave you with this little triangle, the pizza slice right over there. You wanna keep this heavy to keep the haircut square. See a lot of length, so we can either Check for the previous cut baseline. Yeah, and you have a good build, so too. Slightly lift. See, that is a nice way to keep length yeah a lot of those rockabilly styles is all about leaving a lot of length in the front to play with like short on the crown area but then you know when you go to a gig and your pompadour is falling apart that you really got those long strains of hair hidden in there yeah so i'm gonna continue checking for length One. See how my comb is right in the parting. And then I pull it. And I move my body to where I want to cut it. Section. See, in the front part, now this is where all that length is hidden. Yeah. 
I don't know about you guys, but I love gray hair, man. Nothing beats a silver fox. It just makes every haircut look even better. Yeah, so I like to keep a lot of length, but again, I want to keep it easy for my clients to groom. So I'm going to keep length, but I'm definitely going to take out weight later on. See? Comb in my section. Combing it down. Using the tips of my scissors to connect. Not too much tension on the hair. We want to keep that length. Yeah. And the only thing that I'm going to do to create a little bit a flow is slightly lift the hair and point cut, yeah? If you find this hard, the lifting part, you can always move to the other side of the cut and lift it higher by doing your basic See? So that's how you blend those super long length into quite longer sides that fluently transfer into a super short nape area. Now I know there's this little, I'm gonna clean that all up. This is just my sketch, yeah? I want to get to know that, well I actually, know the hair but not my chair. Why is this not old as old shit? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna continue the section in the front. Look at that shape. That's already ready becoming a very very nice shape. Yeah. Continue. Taking some extra hair. I don't think there's a lot of hair coming off. But we're gonna check just to be sure. Lift. Yeah, there is a certain schwoom in the way you wanna comb it, right? There is a little wave that we wanna follow. There you go. A lift. Make sure that your hands are very relaxed throughout the hair. Yeah. When I was a um, student, when I was an apprentice, um, I was really taught to take these super small sections and then stand here and pull and pull and tension. And that is a beautiful way of working, but the longer I work with hair, the more I'm getting the feeling that just like follow that natural feel and shape of the hair. Hair is so unique, every kind is so unique that learn the basics, yeah, and learn them like like, like like, your second nature. Stand here, stand there. But the longer you work, the more you gotta loosen up and really follow the flow of the cut in the hair itself. Yes, well, I'm gonna do exactly the same on the other side. Yes, so I'll take out that little triangle, that little pizza pie. Lift, not too much tension. Look for your baseline, there it is. Down a little bit, there you go. Double check. Yeah. 
Okay, so these are the basic steps, again, that I use pretty much on every haircut. Now, I've been doing this for, for quite a while this way, but so I know exactly how to connect all these areas. But look, I'm gonna dry the hair, I'm, I'm gonna dry the hair and then like really go for that final shape. But I wanna tell you something. I usually go to the drying of the hair the moment I can comb the hair, when it's just wet, there is some old product in there, which makes it even easier for me to work. But look, if you can just move the hair around, yeah, and you can already see, see, I already really, really love that shape. See, there is a lot of length to play with on the side. It's gonna make it look really old school. It's nice and flat on that crown area. This hair is already gone, and I haven't really started my haircut yet. I just took away the hair that was in the way of my haircut. So now I'm gonna dry, yeah, and then, and then the real fun starts. But look, this is so nice. There is a lot of length left. Yeah, and we go into that super short nape area with enough weight and length to go for that nice DA, yeah? But if you wanna go shorter, go shorter. See, it's your haircut, it's not my haircut. This is what I would do. But if you wanna do skin in the skin faded sides or whatever, you can do it, right? As long as that basic shape is already there. So. I'm going to start by drying the hair using a hand brush because I want the hot air to be able to go through my brush. Yeah, I don't want to take out the natural fold by using a brush where the teeth are too close together. No, I really want the hair to be able to move. Yeah, so while drying the hair, the hair is gonna tell me exactly like, hey man, you should cut me a little bit shorter over there. Hey man, you totally fucked up my nape area. Well, I certainly hope that's not gonna happen, but here we go. Maybe halfway the drying, I might add a little product to give it some extra hold. First, I'm gonna look for a dryer. Oh. See, move the hair, and while you move the hair, use your eyes to find out where there is bulk, yeah? The hair that should really move around into shape. <laughs> so, I've dried the hair, yeah, well, as you can tell, see, a lot of length left here, nice shape, now I kind of want to accentuate that length here by going a little bit shorter, right under there, yeah, so you get that nice flow, but See, from here on, it is really what you like most about your haircut. Yeah, so you took away all the excess hair. Excess, 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 excess hair. And now we're pretty much gonna go all freehand. And really detail the cut. See, I'm staying in the flow of the haircut. I'm laying it exactly where I want it. And from that position, I'm gonna cut.
Okay. The moment I'm happy with how everything kind of flows, you can use the tips of your blenders and kind of draw into the cut to make it blend more and to give it even more direction. Yeah, put your blenders in there and just kind of draw into the hair to give it a bit of that Velcro working. See, those shorter hairs are gonna grab the longer hairs, Jason. I, I was trying to turn it off. You are making so much noise, Jason. Actually, we had this incredible day shooting models. So if you want to see what we did today, go to our Instagram, go to our Facebook. It was a great day, man. I love getting the team together and, and just make cool stuff for the sake of making cool stuff. That's the way to keep yourself and your team inspired, right? Okay, see how the hair is grabbing into each other? Yeah, make sure that you know, see, this is not bulk, this is weight. Yeah, know the difference, draw into the hair. Now, as I told you before, I like that length, but I want it to be easy for my client. So I'm gonna take sections pretty much following the sections that I took creating the basic shape. I'm kind of going to double check them. Comb, step in, spread the hair over your fingers and just take out not too much weight. Yeah, I know it looks kind of brutal that I go into the hair quite deep, but as you can tell, I'm only taking out a little amount of hair. You just want to texturize the hair. You want the hair to make it easier for the ends to grab into each other when you're using product, but what you do not want to do is thin the hair too much, yeah? You don't want the hair to be wispy. So as you can tell, I'm, I, I'm following um, pretty much, what's the right word in English? Remember, I'm a Dutch, and sometimes it's a little hard. You've got to follow the direction of the section that you took. So, section. Yeah, take a section again. Now comb it. Get it flat on your fingers. Now look at the shape of how I'm putting the scissors in. See, I'm pretty much following the direction of the section. Section up, knowing where to lift that section and just taking out the bluntness of those lines. See, in that way, those ends are really gonna grab into each other, making it way easier to style the hair at home.
See, that is really... The trick is to know how much you need to use to get that perfect balance in the hair. Use the white teeth of your comb, yeah, because in this stage of the haircut, you do not want to force it into a direction it does not want to go itself. Yeah, make it a custom made haircut. That's why we call them customers, right? They're all different. They all get a different haircut. I mean, the base, the base of the most haircuts is the same. You know, a flat top might be a flat top, but even within those haircuts, there are differences. Yeah, because not everybody's hair is the same. This is, however, the part of the cut that I love the most. This is really where you put your signature. Okay, once you're happy with your overall shape, we're gonna go to the outlines. Yes, I have talked about this one before too. Your outlines are really the frame of your artwork so make sure they stand out yeah now when you have longer fenders don't just wrong go into them because you're gonna have these little fuck ups yeah look at how the hair wants to flow again see combing into that flow and clean up your outlines but you don't want to take out any hairs that belong to your fenders okay For Captain Foster. Okay, so we're gonna groom the hair. I got the pink Russo, I got the green Russo, I'm gonna mix them, which we call the Muppet Mesh. I mean, obvious, right? Kermit, Piggy. Um, 
when you use an oil-based product, make sure that your client knows what you're putting in there. I would never use an oil-based... Thank you. I would never use an oil-based product on a client that has not used oil-based before. I want to be very clear about that. It's not the easiest product. You have to bring up your clients. But when you're doing these old-school pompadours, old-school slick bags, you got to understand one thing. Before uh, chemical products like gel or hairspray were even invented, if you look at an old movie, actors will always have that slicked, oily look because of pomades. This is the foundation of our brand. I still love those old school pomades. I don't get to use them as much as I want, as I want to, because you know, to be a true greaser, it's a lifestyle. It's not just a haircut. But when you got your true greaser in the chair, they usually be like, oh yeah, man, put a lot of that stuff in my hair. I love how I'm able to really clay it the way I like to. So, pink, which is definitely the strong one. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of green to make it more like easy to comb. It's gonna add a little bit more um, shine to it. Yeah, now, Make sure you divide it over the hair. Very important. This is not a product that should only be on the surface of the hair. This is a product that should really build up. Yeah. So divide it throughout the hair. Yeah, make sure it's everywhere. See, once the product is divided over the hair, we're gonna comb it through. Again, to spread it evenly over the hair. Yeah? So start with your shorter length. Yeah? And comb it back and forth through the hair. You really wanna slick stick it. Divide it. Yeah. If you look at those old rock and roll movies, if you look at Elvis Presley, if you look at Johnny Cash, yeah, they could actually comb their hair without using a mirror. That is the beauty about the greasy product. It is always in your hair and it's maintains its combability throughout the day. See, divide it, divide it. I'm combing it from left to right. So the product is everywhere. And by combing it from left to right, you're also building volume. Because the hair is kind of bumping into each other. Yeah? So it's really gonna stick together. Now the beauty with as much length as I left on Mr. Mr. White here. Which is of course his Instagram name, Leon. What's the name of the barbershop again? Sick Puppy Barber Parlor. Sick Puppy Barber Parlor. Look it up on Instagram. Super, super nice barbershop. See, dividing it. Now, I hope you can tell that even when I just slick it back, yeah, that is already a super nice 
look. Yeah, and this is just slick back. So if you want to go for like a side parting, because of all that length, yeah, it's actually really easy to play with different kinds of cuts. Yeah, and this is the kind of product that makes it really easy to change those styles. See, that is your side parting. If you kind of want to give that side parting a little bit more effect, yeah, kind of go into there. Yeah, do a little bit of a loose wave. Coming into place and use, in the end, your pick. This is a super nice tool, as you have seen in other videos, to really put the hair there where you want it. If you want to have a little bit more volume in the front, yeah, make your client, see, use gravity and make it work for you. There you go. You can slick your sides back even a little bit more. See, one of my all-time favorites, your long trim pompadour with tapered nape. Yeah, so there is a lot of, there's, there, there is a lot of hidden length in this, in this haircut. That's what I like about it. Yeah, it works beautiful with the collar. Those longer sides give it a super old school look. Plus it looks really, square shape. That's, that's pretty much the video that I did on Leon the other time, just with a little bit more detail. I really hope you enjoyed uh, the cut. I wish you a great day. Hope to see you one day at Scorum. Support your local barbershop.